I feel like God's about to do even greater than he's done up to this time. Glory to God. Well, we're excited to preach the word this morning, Kingdom Warriors uh, Part 2. And we're going to share what the Lord has laid on our heart for all of the warriors in the building. Amen, amen. We want to open up with the text, Joshua chapter 1 verse uh, 1 and we're going to be reading through verse 4 I believe it is this morning Joshua chapter 1 I'm going to ask you to stand in reverence to the word of God this morning Joshua chapter 1 and let's read it loud and let's read it together and let's read it like we are warriors that are going to take the land amen 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 let's read it together after the death Read that one more time. I will give you. I will give you what? I will give you what? I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. You may have your seat this morning. We want to come to you with a word this morning over the next 30 minutes. A word that God has put on my spirit this week. And the title of our message this morning is, The Day Moses Died. I'm going to say that one more time. Our title of our message this morning is, The Day Moses Died. Now, you're giving me that KLM look already this morning. Now, you know we're going to go somewhere today. Don't look at me like that. You know we got the victory. Come on now. This is a victory church. The day Moses died, I came to tell somebody, if you're going to be a warrior, sometimes you've got to bury old things. Sometimes in order for God to bring you into a new season, you've got to learn how to bury an old season. As we read the text this morning, we find that the children of Israel have embarked upon a new season. And is there anybody in the room that say, Pastor, I'm, I'm walking into a new season in my life? We find that the children of Israel are getting ready to walk into a new day. We find that Moses had died and now the warriors must arise to go in and take the promised land. We find in the first chapter of Joshua that God is up to something new. How many know this morning that your God is always up to something new in your life? The Bible said that his mercies are new every morning and great is his faithfulness. Somebody to be excited that you serve a God that has a new plan and even if the other plan that you had failed God knows how to step in with his hand and give you a whole new plan I'm I'm just glad he doesn't throw us away when we make mistakes and mess up and drop the ball but he allows us to come into a new season where there's new mercy the word mercy in the Hebrew means kindness I'm so glad when I woke up this morning that I bumped into kindness when I got out the bed because the Bible said his mercies are new every morning I'm so glad that I serve a kind Kind and merciful God. So we find that in the first chapter of Joshua that God is causing his people. They have just be, uh, been wanderers for 40 years. 40 years they've wandered around the desert because of disobedience. How many know that disobedience will put you off the course of God? Disobedience will get you off the track of God. As the people were disobedient, uh, God had them to be wanderers for 40 years. But I'm so glad in Joshua chapter 1 that the children of Israel that had faith and believed God, he said, you're wandering season is over and now it's time for you to become a warrior it's time for you to go in and take the land I just wonder is there about 10 people in the building this morning that say I'm ready to fight and take the land I'm not afraid of what the devil has thrown at me in the last seven days I'm not afraid of what he's thrown at me in the last 30 days I'm not afraid
afraid of what the enemy is scheming and plotting and planning against me because I understand in order to go to another level in God I must begin to win the battles that are in front of me how many know when you win the battle you get the victory and you get the spoils of the battle I don't mind battling because I know at the end of the day God is going to give me everything that is in the promised land the milk and the honey I don't know about you but I'm ready for some honey honey is anybody ready for the milk and honey of God to begin to flow into your life give the Lord a hand clap now the text gets interesting this morning because the first five words pastor Daniel that God spoke to Joshua pastor Denise I couldn't seem to get past these first five words because in the text he said Joshua to his servant he said listen Joshua Moses my servant is dead Now, we might be tempted to read over this and and in our zeal to understand the story of Joshua, we might be tempted to think to ourselves, why did God stop and tell the people that Moses was dead? But I want you to know that it was a very significant, life-changing statement because Moses had represented a great season in the life of the people of God. Has anybody had a great season in God? Has anybody ever been through a season where you know that you know that only God could have brought you through? Has anybody been through a season where you know your body was sick and you know it was him that healed you? Has anybody ever been through a season where you knew the relationship you were in was not of God and it took God and his angels to pull you up out of that thing and get you free and set you free and liberate? Is there anybody that knows that your God has brought you out of a whole bunch of stuff? If he did, praise him a little bit better than that this morning. So we find that God has opened doors through the ministry of Moses. Moses has delivered the people. He has brought them out of Israel, out of Egypt. He has brought them out of bondage. And we know from our scriptures that Moses was not a fly-by-night leader. How many know that today a lot of our leaders are fly-by-night? They are here today and gone tomorrow. We see today people come into ministry today and they're ready. They get hit a couple times and they're ready to quit tomorrow. People start a business today and a couple weeks later, they're going to give you a business card. You go to call the number and it's disconnected because people don't stick with stuff a long time anymore. People sign up for college one week and the next semester, they're ready to drop out. Praise God. Yesterday, we met a young lady from Pine Rest that spent 18 years getting her degree now that's longevity if she can make it 18 years young people I think you can do about four years and get that bachelor's degree come on somebody longevity we find the ministry of Moses was a a dedication and commitment we got people today getting married and and they get married one week and then six months later they're ready to divorce how many know in this day and hour you got to learn how to be dedicated to that which God has given you got to be committed God wants you to go for the long haul I, I feel like God is looking for some people who don't just sign up for stuff and quit the next week when things get hard Sometimes you got to stand in the midst and say, listen, this is my God-given assignment, and I, God has put me right here. He has planted my feet, and I'm not moving. I'm not backing up. I'm not going to the left nor to the right until God tells me to move. Is there anybody that says, I'm going to be committed to the assignment that God has given me in this season, and I'm going to begin to see it through until it's done, and I'm going to stand like a warrior and not be a warrior in this season because God said greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world and no weapon formed against me shall prosper is there anybody that say I'm in it for the long haul I'm in it in the, for the long haul We find that Moses, and I'm going somewhere this morning, Moses was a man of dedication and commitment. When we study the life of Moses, we find he was a great leader. He was a hero. He was a lawgiver. He was in the military, a political leader and prophet to the people. We find that the life of Moses was an entire era for the people of God. He had some big shoes to fill. Amen. Joshua would have to 
to fill big shoes but this is the revelation that God gave me about the text he said when God gets ready to produce a nation of warriors sometimes he removes the most significant person in your life sometimes your greatest season of pain God is trying to bring out the warrior in you are you hearing me this morning uh, the title of the message is the day that Moses died I want to suggest that the day that Moses died they had to grow up so they could go up The Bible said that the children of Israel grieved for 30 days because the death of Moses was overwhelming. They were hurt. They were crying. I don't know about you, but somebody in the room has been through something this week that has caused you pain, and you're hurting, and you're crying, and you're saying, God, why did you take this person from me? God, why did you do this thing in my life? God, why did I have to grow up without a father? God, why did I go through a divorce? God, God, why did I have to go through all this pain? But you got to understand there's purpose in your pain this morning. If Moses had not been taken out of the picture, the warriors would have never arise. And I want to say maybe God has allowed your Moses to die. Maybe God has allowed this season of pain so that the warrior in you would step up to the plate. The warrior in you would decide, I can't go back. I've got to go forward. The warrior in you would decide my God is able to deliver me and bring me out of this situation. Now I feel like I'm preaching a little bit better and you're clapping on this morning. Warriors arise because Moses died. There was a new season. And I want to suggest today, according to Deuteronomy 32, verse 50, I want to suggest that not only did God allow Moses to die, but it was God who took Moses off the scene. I came to tell you that God has taken certain people out of your life. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, Don't you cry, not one more day. Don't you weep don't you mourn not one more day because God said I had to take them out of the way they were bigger than life you were looking to them more than you were looking to me so I had to remove them out of your way so you would get your eyes on me and know that it's me and you baby from this season forward where are the warriors in the kingdom of God somebody shout like you're a warrior this morning Shout like you're a warrior in this place this morning. Shout like you're a warrior in this place this morning. Shout like you're a warrior in this place this morning. Going in the promised land. Does anybody say I'm going in like Joshua? Slap three people and tell them I'm going in. 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 I like that music. I'm going in. I'm going in. Come here, soldier. I'm going in. Are there any soldiers in the building that say I'm going in? I've cried some tears. I've been rejected. I've been hurt by some people. But I'm going in the promised land that God has assigned me. And I will not let my past stop me from my future. Moses had to die, but I'm going to live. Moses had to go, but I'm going to live. And there are any people of God this morning that say, I shall live. I shall arise. I shall go forward. I'm getting all my stuff back. I'm getting all God has for me. All my kids will be saved. All the days of my life I'm going to be blessed. God told Joshua, every place you step your feet up. If you want to go to the left, come on. God said, I'll give it to you. You want to go to the right? God said, I'll give it to you. Matter of fact, Marcy, why don't you take some new ground? Because that's where we are in the spirit. We're not going to stay in the same old place in the same old position but we're about to go to a new place in God there's new ground to take there's new territory to take there's new levels to take can anybody see your future in the realm of the spirit I'm a soldier in the army of 